Hey guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I am going to be going over the last installment of this endocrine series, and it's going to be the adrenal glands. So before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to press that thumbs up button. Don't forget I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And October, Sunday, October 30th, one, I can't speak. Sunday, October 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be doing an NCLEX review where I'm going over priority and delegation, and I will be covering the next generation NCLEX questions, those content. So um, if you're interested or you know someone who's studying for NCLEX, please let them know about it. This is a free event, and it's going to be on YouTube Live. So go ahead. You can check out uh, the information about the details on my um, YouTube channel. So guys... <coughs> Excuse me, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, as I said, we're going to go over the adrenal glands. So, oh, one more thing, guys. If you haven't watched, because I think this video is part four, part five. I don't, I can't recall. But this is the last installment. If you haven't watched the other videos on the endocrine gland, you don't really have to watch it in order, but I encourage you to do so. If you don't, make sure you go back and watch those other videos just so you can have a complete understanding of the um, endocrine system. So anyway, guys, the adrenal glands, look at what it says. It says the paired adrenal glands, because you have two of them, the paired adrenal glands are yellow, small yellow masses of tissue lake located above the kidneys. You have two kidneys, and so you have two of the adrenal glands, because those two adrenal glands, like it says, they're yellow masses, and they sit right above each kidney. Now, as I said in my previous video, if you take your two hands and you put them behind your back, right where your palms are sitting, that's around that right around the area where your kidney should be, and the adrenal glands sit right above the kidney. And if you take a look, here's a picture of one of the kidneys, and there's the adrenal gland, right? That's right there sitting above the kidney, all right? Let's keep going. Now that you know where the adrenal gland is, each gland consists of a central or a middle portion. That's the adrenal medulla. And that's easy to remember, medulla middle. So the adrenal medulla, that's in the middle. And then the larger outer portion is the adrenal cortex. So if you take a look again, here's a kidney. The adrenal gland sits right on top of the kidney. Now, this is the adrenal gland. The outside part, that's the cortex. And that's responsible for salt, sex, sugar. I talked to you about the video on, I talked to you about this on the previous video, but I'm going to go in detail in this video. And the medulla, the middle portion is responsible for epinephrine and norepinephrine. Look what it says here. The adrenal medulla, that's the middle. It secretes two hormones, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline and norepinephrine. The adrenal medulla, the middle, this is called the emergency gland of the body because it prepares us to cope with threatening situations. And in the previous video, I, I gave you an example about when my wallet was slow, stolen, right? And that epinephrine and norepinephrine had to kick in because this was a threatening situation. During stressful situations, when anxiety is aroused, neuronal messengers are sent through the sympathetic nervous, excuse me, sympathetic nerves to the adrenal medulla. This response enables you to think quickly and then fight harder or run much faster than usual. And so that's why I call it your um, fight or flight hormones. It gives you that energy, it gives you that burst of energy, it gives you that increased glucose, it gives you that strength, that power to either fight that threatening situation or flight to run away. So look what ha happens. You have anxiety. Anxiety affects the hypothalamus, then sympathetic nerves stimulate the adrenal medulla. Because the sympathetic nerves stimulate the adrenal medulla, increased secretions of epinephrine and norepinephrine release. This causes physiologic adjustments that helps the body cope with stress. So whenever the body is stressed, and it could be a physical stress, like you were physically assaulted, or it could be an emotional stress or psychological stress, that will be enough for this chain reaction to happen. So let's talk about the actions of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Why are they so important? What do these hormones do? They increase alertness. 
it's late at night and you're walking to your car and it's creepy, right? That epinephrine or epinephrine, it kicks in and it makes you more aware of your environment, increases alertness to help protect yourself to fight or flight increases heart rate and cardiac output. Why is that important? Well, remember guys, your blood is what's carrying the oxygen, vitamin, nutrient, glucose, everything your body needs. So as your heart rate increases, it's increasing the blood flow to the tissues that's feeding those tissues to give you that energy to fight or to flight, right? Constricts blood vessels. Why is that important? Well, as blood vessels constrict, uh, constricts, what happened? Blood pressure goes up, okay? increases strength of the muscles, increases glucose and fatty acid concentration. That glucose gives you the energy, dilates airway so that breathing is, is more effective. So now let's talk about um, the adrenal cortex. Remember we talked about there's a medulla and the cortex. The cortex is the outer side, just like the medulla is responsible for epinephrine, norepinephrine, we just went over, you know, those actions of epinephrine, norepinephrine. What about the cortex? What is the cortex responsible for? Let me switch the page to remind you, and I talked about this in my previous video, the cortex is responsible for salt, sex, and sugar. And I made those three S's just as an easy way for you to remember, but the salt is really the mineral corticoids, mineral corticoids. The sex, that's your androgens, your estrogens. And your sugar, that's your glucocorticoid, your uh, um, cortisol, okay? So let's take a look. The adrenal cortex, remember that's the outer one that's responsible for the salt, sex, and sugar, secretes steroid hormones. The adrenal cortex secretes three different types of steroid hormones. Again, your salt, sex, and sugar. So let's go over the sugar first. That's your glucocorticoid, also known as your cortisol. It's also um, known as your hydrocortisone. And let me be specific. Cortisol is a type of glucocorticoid because there are different types, okay? But when you think of glucocorticoid, um, cortisol is a type, and it's also known as hydrocortisone. Why is this important? Increases or promotes a glucose production. We know glucose gives us energy. It increases the concentration of glucose in the blood, providing glucose supplies when the body's under stress and the need of extra what? Energy. Number two, mineral corticoids. That's your salt. Mineral corticoids regulate water and salt balance. Aldosterone is the principal mineral corticoid. So guys, just like I told you, when you think of the glucocorticoids, the cortisol is the main type of glucocorticoid. When you're thinking of a mineral corticoids, the main type of mineral corticoid is your aldosterone. It's the principal mineral corticoid. It stimulates the kidneys to conserve or to hold on to sodium. Remember, guys, sodium and potassium have an inverse relationship. So if that patient's holding on to all of their sodium, get, guess what they're getting rid of? Potassium. When sodium's up, the potassium's down. When the potassium's up, the sodium's down. So that aldosterone helps the patient to hold on to the sodium and to excrete the potassium. And lastly, number three, your sex hormones. You have your androgens and your estrogens. Your androgen, that's your hormone. Those are your, 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 your male hormone. The ma it has that masculinizing effect, right? And then, of course, your estrogen, that's the female sex hormone. Stress, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, stress stimulates the hypothalamus to secrete no, I can't speak, to secrete corticotropin releasing factor. That hormone stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete adrenal corticotropic hormone. That's your ACTH, okay? And that regulates both the glucocorticoids and the aldosterone secretion. Why do we care about this? Take a look. Abnormally, abnormally large amounts of glucocorticoids. So you got all the sugar in the blood, right? all this cortisol, abnormally large amounts of glucocorticoids, whether it's from disease or from drugs. But if that patient has a large amount of glucocorticoids in their blood, look what can happen. It can cause Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease, guys, is primarily when the patient has too much glucocorticoids. But also when they have um, Cushing's, they got too much glucocorticoids, they have too much of that cortisol, but they also have too much of that sex and sugar as well. 
And that's why that patient with Cushing's, we're going to see them with the hertuism. The man's going to have the male boobs and the women will have facial hair, right? Those sex hormones, right? Um, salt. They have too much of the salt. And guess what follows salt? Fluid. So we'll see facial edema. We'll see their face puff puffy where we'll see, um, we call it the moon face. We'll see fat redistribution. And so what we'll see, they'll have a pocket of fat, like um, right below their neck. And we call that a buffalo hump. We'll see they have fat in the trunk area, but their extremities will be more thin. They tend to be uh, diabetic or have high glucose because that patient has too much salt, sex, and sugar. But primarily in Cushing's, what they have the most of is a cortisol, the glucocorticoid. Okay. So in Cushing's, fats mobilize, and that's why we see them having that, um, um, very uh, big trunk area. Edema gives them a full face. They have that um, moon face appearance. The blood glucose concentration rises and the immune system's depressed. I'm gonna talk to you guys about that in a second. And also they have hypertension because remember in Cushing's, they got too much salt, sex, and sugar. OK, so all of this makes sense. Let me talk to you about this immune um, system depression. Something important for you guys to know, the glucocorticoids, this is a type of steroid. And let me tell you something. You have to know this about the steroids. They increase the blood glucose, right? They make the bones porous. So they puts the patient at risk for fractures. They're very hard on the stomach. So it can make the patient... Um, have peptic ulcers or GI irritation, and they um, decrease inflammation. They um, decrease the immune response. They depress the immune response, so it puts the patient at risk for infection. So whenever a patient's taking high-dose steroids or steroids for a long time, you need to be concerned about infection. You need to be concerned about hyperglycemia. You need to be concerned about peptic ulcers, and you need to be concerned about fractures, okay? All right, lastly, Let's talk about hyposecretion. Hyposecretion of the adrenal cortex can lead to Addison's disease. That's basically your opposite of Cushing's. Remember in Cushing's, you had too much salt, too much sex, too much sugar. Well, in Addison's disease, we need to add salt, add sex, add sugar. So when you see Addison's, remember that word add, and you'll remember that you need to add salt, add sex, add sugar. With Addison's disease, guys, they don't have enough of that reaction that we talked about that the body naturally produces when you're in stress to either, you know, give you energy or to get away, right? If you have Addison's, you don't have any of that. You don't have increased glucose to give you energy. You don't have any of that happening. So look, with Addison's, they lose the ability to cope with stress. Because remember that glucocorticoids, primarily the uh, cortisol, the mineral corticoids, the androgens, those get, help the patient to deal with that stress. But if you have Addison's and you need to add those steroids, you can't deal with that stress. So you already know a big nursing intervention for that patient that has Addison's is to protect them from stress, physical, emotional, psychological, because their body can't handle it. Look at this. Even the stress of mild infections can kill them. Lastly, let's go over stress that threatens homeostasis. For the million time, everything your body does is to result in homeostasis, which is balance. We always want a balance. We don't ever want one side higher than the other. We always want a balance, homeostasis, neutrality. Stressors, stimuli that disrupt the steady state of the body must be dealt with swiftly and effectively. Stressors, whether they're from infection, because infection, that is a stress on the body disease, having an argument with somebody, even the anxiety of taking a test for which one is not prepared, that can threaten the person's homeostasis, putting them in a state of stress. So somebody with Addison's disease, their body wouldn't be able to help handle this. And guys, this was the endocrine system in a nutshell. This was the last portion of my series. Please make sure you watch all of the videos on endocrine if you haven't done so already, just to get a very proper understanding of what's going on with the endocrine system. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please let me know what you thought about this video in the comment section. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover next or even more extensively. Don't forget,
about the live YouTube NCLEX review that's coming up October 30th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. And you guys will catch me on the next video.